Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the problems of uh, quiz 1. The first question, the sum of the solutions of this equation absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 10 is equal to what? So first we have to solve this equation, find the solutions and add them up because the question is asking about the sum. Okay, that's very simple. So absolute value of 2x plus 5 is equal to 10. Yes, so there are two possibilities. If I ask you what is the number whose absolute value is 10, of course one immediate answer is 10, but there is another answer because absolute value is talking about the magnitude of the number. So if the question mark is 10, it's still its magnitude, in other words, its absolute value becomes 10. So there are two possibilities for this question mark. You have to consider both. So this means that either 2x plus 5 is 10, then it means that 2x is equal, I move 5 to the other side, 10 minus 5 is 5. So this means that x is 5 over 2. So that is one solution of this absolute value equation. And the other alternative that you shouldn't forget is the minus 10 one. And then I move 5 to the other side, so 2x this time becomes minus 15. And then now, if I want to find x, x becomes minus 15 over 2. Now I want the sum. So the sum, the question mark in this problem, is the first solution plus the second solution. But this just becomes minus 10 over 2, and the answer becomes minus 5. So what I am supposed to write here is simply type minus 5. Okay, now the second question. If 4x squared minus y squared equals 21 and 2x plus y equals to 7, then 4x plus 3y is equal to what? Okay, so if you see 4x squared minus y squared forms a conjugate pattern, yes, so as soon as I see the first equation, I can factor it out as factorize it as 2x plus y times 2x minus y equals to 21. But then immediately you see that 2x plus y is given to be 7, so I can write 7 instead. So this becomes 7, 2x minus y is equal to 21. If I divide both by 7, 2x minus y becomes 3. Okay, and then it becomes extremely simple problem, yes, because I know from the beginning that 2x plus y is 7. Now I discovered that 2x minus y should be 3. So I set up a system of two equations. One of the equation is the one given to me from the beginning, and the other one is 2x minus y equals to 3. And for example, I add these two equations side by side. What happens? y and y are cancelled. 2x plus 2x becomes 4x. And on the right hand side, 7 plus 3 becomes 10. So this becomes 4x is equal to 10. I am looking for x. So x becomes 10 over 4. But I always simplify in the form of fractions. I simplify everything by 2, so it becomes 5 over 2. So this is the answer for x. And when I have my x, I go back either to this equation or to that equation, replace x with 5 over 2, and find the unknown y. If you don't mind, let me use the first equation. So this becomes 2 multiplied. I found x to be 5 over 2 and y is still unknown. The answer is supposed to be 7. But 2 times 5 over 2 is simply 5 plus y is equal to 7. So y becomes 2. 
and now the question mark is 4 times x plus 3y so it becomes 4 I found x to be 5 over 2 plus 3 times y I found it to be 2 so 4 times 5 over 2 2 and 4 are simplified to 2 times 5 10 and this one is 6 so this becomes 10 plus 6 so the answer is 16 and what you have to type in the box is simply 16 of course when I was correcting your paper I saw that some of you did it in a different way that is also completely valid some of you got y from here and wrote y in terms of x and then took this one and put it in this equation and then it becomes an equation only in one unknown x and then you can solve and find that x and then after you found x you put it in here and find y but uh, I want you to train your eyes to detect these patterns as soon as you see them so that is the whole point okay the third question now consider the following equation 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x equals to 1 over 12 the product of the solutions of this equation is equal to we're supposed to find the solutions multiply them and find the product and write it here of course this is also a very standard problem it's a it's an example of what is called rational equations during the lesson I told you that one good way to do it is to multiply both sides by LCD of all denominators involved but of course this problem is so simple the LCD of all denominators indeed is indeed the product of all denominators in this case so LCD in this case is equal to 12 times x times x minus 1 so the first thing I will do I will multiply the left and the right by LCD so I would write 12x times x minus 1 I multiply that by the left side which is 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x and I also multiply it on the right hand side so 12x x minus 1 if someone asks why we do that I would say this is one way to get rid of all denominators and reduce the equation to an equation without fractions and usually solving an equation without fractions is simpler than solving equations with fractions okay uh, so what we will do so let me write all these steps because I saw a lot of mistakes in solving this simple problem so what I will do I will take my LCD and I have to multiply it here and then multiply it there okay so it becomes 12x times x minus 1 multiplied by 1 over x minus 1 and then I have minus sign I will take my LCD and multiply it by the second fraction which in this case is of course 1 over x and on the right hand side if you don't mind let us just copy and paste everything for the time being to see what happens so let me also put a dot here okay so now the problem is that of course in principle you can multiply this into the numerator but that is not the goal the goal is to simplify things as much as possible so this x minus 1 and that x minus 1 are now cancelled one is left from both of them in this one x and x are cancelled one is left from both of them and in this case 12 and 12 are cancelled one is left for both of them okay so this means that in this way all denominators disappear so what is left for me the first one is just simply 12x because 1 1 times 1 divided by 1 is still 1 so this is just 12x okay and then for the next one what is left for me a 12 is left here x minus 1 is left the rest of it is just 1 so it becomes minus 12 times x minus 1 and on the right hand side two terms are left one is x and the other one is x minus 1 so this means that instead of solving this equation I will solve this equation but of course there will be one uh, danger here that might be there is a root that comes in because I am actually solving this equation instead there might be 
a chance that I get a root which is a false root. So then I have to also be careful about that. But anyway, I will solve this very simple equation. If you don't mind, let me open up a little bit of space by moving it up. And now what I will do, I will multiply this minus 12 here and here, and I also multiply x here and there to expand. So this becomes 12x minus 12x, but plus 12. On the right hand side, I will have x squared minus x. And now what happens, this minus 12x and 12x are gone. So I have this equation x squared minus x is 12. So let me write it here, x squared, change my color, sorry, x squared minus x equals to 12. Okay, so this is a very standard problem, it's a quadratic equation. To solve a quadratic equation you have to move everything to one side and use PQ or ABC or even better factorization if this is if you are good in factorizing. So here it doesn't matter in which way you do it. Let me do it using factorization because it is not hard. I will write x I open two pairs of brackets with one x in each one of them and ask myself, can I know two numbers whose sum is minus 1 and the product is minus 12? Yes, the answer is very easy. So it is minus 4 and plus 3. And always double check. Minus 4 plus 3 is indeed minus 1. That's correct. Minus 4 times 3 is indeed minus 12. That's also correct. And on the right hand side, I have 0. Okay, the product of two numbers is equal to zero. Either the first one is zero or the second one is zero by the zero product rule. If the first one is zero, so let me write, either this one is zero or this one is zero. This means the first, this gives me four, the other one gives me minus three. Okay, so these are the solutions, but the question mark is the product of the solutions. One of them is 4, the other one is minus 3, so the answer becomes minus 12. And minus 12 is the one that you have to write it here. By the way, let me remind you during the lessons, I told you that if you have a quadratic equation, if your goal is just to find the sum of the roots, or your goal is just to find the product of the roots. I proved that during the lesson that the sum becomes minus b over a and the product becomes c over a. This we had during the lesson. If you knew this, you could even solve this problem here because you know that you are interested in the product if you remember the formula for the product of the roots of a quadratic equation, you will say that this is my c, which is minus 12, a is 1, so c over a, which is the product, is simply minus 12, and put minus 12 directly here. But of course, it is not needed, so you can just uh, do it in that way. Okay, question number four. Consider the following expression, 2x squared plus 10x all over x squared plus 3x minus 10 times x squared minus 4 all over x squared plus 2x. If you simplify this expression as much as possible, it becomes equal to what? Of course, you see that I have two fractions, two rational expressions, and I want to multiply them. So you know that we have to simplify it. Uh, before multiplication, so I have to factorize the numerators and denominators, okay? And that is extremely simple problem here, because here it is completely evident that I can factor it 2x out. This is a standard quadratic uh, polynomial, so I know how to factorize it. And then this is the conjugate rule, and that again I can factor an x out. So extremely simple problem. So I will do that. So the question mark is equal to I factor a 2x out, so it becomes 2x x plus 5. Always double check that you are doing things correctly. Multiply this back. 2x times x becomes 2x squared, so so far it's correct. 2x times 5 is 10x. Everything is right. But this is a very standard quadratic factorization, so I put, I open two pairs of brackets and then uh, I will say, to, and put 1x here and 1x there and ask myself, what are the numbers whose sum is uh, plus 3 and the product is minus 10? 
So it is very simple. One of them is 5, the other one is 2, and then you have to adjust the signs. So the 5 should be positive, the 2 should be negative. Always double check. If I add them up, it becomes positive 3, correct. If I multiply them, it becomes minus 10, that's also correct. And then the numerator is the conjugate rule, so it becomes x minus 2 times x plus 2. And the denominator, I just factor 1x out, so it becomes x plus 2. And then I told you during the lesson, it is possible to simplify in vertical manner. If, of course, I have a common factor, I can also simplify in cross manner way. So it means the numerator of any fraction can be simplified by the denominator of any other fractions involved in the problem, yes? So, let us try to do that. For example, let us consider the vertical simplification first. I can see in the first fraction x plus 1, x plus 5 and x plus 5 are gone, so 1 is left here, 1 is left there. Nothing can be simplified in vertical manner on the first fraction. What about the second fraction? Yes, this one and that one can be simplified in vertical manner in the second fraction, but nothing more. But can I go further? Yes, because now 2x is composed of 2 multiplied by x, and here I have another factor of x. So this x and that x in the numerator here are simplified again. So 1 is left here, 1 is left there. And now here in this manner, I can also simplify x minus 2 here by x minus 2. So 1 is left here, 1 is left there. So I hope that you can see this 2 survives only. Yes, so 2 and a bunch of 1s are survived. So if I multiply 2 by all bunch of 1s that I got here, the answer is simply 2. So that's the answer that you have to write down in this box. Okay, so now the next question, question number 5. Consider the following equation. How many positive roots the, uh, does this equation have? So we have to uh, find it and uh, type it in the box and of course here you have to fully uh, motivate your answer. So of course uh, one naive approach to the problem is actually raising it to power 2 using this uh, squaring formula writing the first one squared, 2 times the first one times the second one and the second one squared and then of course and then I can open the other one, of course, 10x squared minus 40x plus 16. But I hope that you see it is not going to work. Even if I can simplify a little bit, but the uh, fourth uh, power remains. And then we don't have any formula for solving that. So even though technically speaking, if you expand this, you, have done, you haven't done something wrong, but it is not going to work. The idea is to understand that, as we had in the lesson, that something is repeating itself in the equation here and there so this is the motivation this is the motive for you to have the idea of the auxiliary variable so I would say let x squared minus 4x be equal to t then what happens then equation that I have this becomes t to the power of 2 plus 10 times t plus 16 equals to 0 so then the equation will be t squared plus 10t plus 16 equals to 0. You can use ABC, PQ or even factorization to solve this very simple equation. So let me use factorization. I open two pairs of brackets, I put a t here and a t there and I ask myself I need two numbers whose sum is 10, the product is 16, extremely simple. One of them is 2, the other one is 8 equals to 0. So this means what? It means that the first one is either the first one is 0, which means t is minus 2, or the second one is 0, which means t is minus 8. But be careful, these are not the answers to the solution of these are not the solutions of the original equation. These are the solutions of this equation. I still need to find x. So I have to consider two cases. If t is minus 2 then what does it mean? It means that this expression is t, t is minus 2 so this means x squared minus 4x equals to minus 2 and I have to solve this 
I move this to the left, x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals to 0. But then immediately you see that if you want to factorize this, you become in trouble. The reason is that the discriminant of this, if we calculate, let me calculate the discriminant. Uh, so the discriminant of this, which is b squared minus 4ac, or of course you can use ABC formula, it doesn't matter. So b squared becomes 16 minus 4 times a times c, which is 8, and this becomes 8. Of course, this is positive, so it means that I have two roots from this equation. But because this is not a complete square, the roots are not integers or nice fractions. They involve a square root sign. But it doesn't matter, so let me write them down. So x becomes minus b plus or minus square root of the discriminant d divided by 2a. So this becomes 4, because b is minus 4 in this case, plus or minus the square root of 8, divided by 2. Okay, so this is x. Uh, but the point is that the question is asking for positive roots. It is clear that 4 plus the square root of 8 divided by 2 is positive, because all the numbers involved are positive, so that one is positive. What about 4 minus the square root of 8 over 2? 4 is 4, but the square root of 8 is definitely less than 4, because 4 to power 4 is 16. So the square root of 8 is definitely smaller than 4. If that is smaller than 4, it means 4 minus that number is positive, and when you divide it by 2, it is also positive. Okay? So both of them are positive. Both are positive. But we also have a, another alternative. The other alternative is what happens if t is minus 8. And then it means that I have x squared minus 4x equals to minus 8, and then I move 8 to the other side. It becomes plus 8 equals to 0, and now if I calculate the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, this becomes 16 minus 32, which becomes negative. So no solutions. Okay? So, you see, I introduced an auxiliary variable. First, I found the values of the auxiliary variable. Using that values of the auxiliary variable, I, was able, I, I tried to solve the equation and find x. One of them worked, and I got two positive roots there. The other one does not have any real solutions. So in total, how many positive solutions we have? We have two positive uh, roots or solutions. Yes? Okay, the next question, we are supposed to calculate this limit. The limit of 4 minus x squared all over 3 minus the square root of 7 minus x as x approaches minus 2. As we learned during the lesson, the first thing we do, we just put the number there in the function to see what happens. If I put minus 2 in the numerator, 4 minus 4 becomes 0. And if I put minus 2 here, 7 minus minus 2 becomes 9, the square root of 9 is 3, and 3 minus 3 it becomes 0. So it is the limit in determinate form of the form 0 over 0, with, as I mentioned later in the lesson, the correct way of saying it is not 0 over 0 is to say infinitesimal over infinitesimal means a negligible number over a negligible number. Anyway, and then we learned what is the trick there. Whenever you have a polynomial causing the problem becoming zero, you factorize it. Whenever you have an expression containing the third sign, with second root, of course, except those roots are not uh, in your lesson. So then I have to use the conjugate rule and multiply by the conjugate uh, partner of that expression. Okay, so what we will do, we will write the limit of, I will copy and paste the whole thing to write it properly in the exam or quiz. And then I would say that this is, so the question mark is equal to the limit, x goes to minus two. And then I rescale it by the conjugate of the denominator. 
So uh, here the sign is minus, the conjugate of it becomes the same expression except that I have plus instead. But I cannot just multiply the numerator unless I divide it by the same thing, so that the same number, so that I am not changing anything. So if I ask you what is this expression, you will tell me because the numerator and denominators are the same, so this expression is 1. And when I multiply 1 by that expression, I am not changing anything, so I am allowed to keep this equality sign. But why this is useful, you will see now. Because now what I can do, I can write the limit, I multiply the numerator by the numerator. I should also multiply the denominators, but this is the conjugate rule. So the answer becomes 3 to the power of 2 minus the square root of 7 minus x to power 2 using the conjugate rule but 3 to power 2 is 9 and this power of 2 will kill this square root sign yes so this becomes what 9 minus some people write 7 minus x like that but be careful that is wrong you have to put a pair of brackets around that and then x goes to minus 2 but in the numerator I can immediately see that I have the conjugate rule so let me factorize it so it becomes 2 minus x and 2 plus x and done. I just copy and paste, paste the rest. That's, sorry, paste the rest. And then divided by, so let me open this up. It becomes 9 minus 7, but be careful, this minus sign will also go here. So it becomes plus x and the answer becomes simply 2 minus x, oh, sorry, 2 plus x. So the denominator is just simply 2 plus x, and x goes to minus 2. And then now you realize that this 2 plus x and this 2 plus x are cancelled, so 1 is left here, 1 is left there, and I don't need to write the 1s, so what I will do, I will continue here, so this becomes the limit, x goes to minus 2, I have I have only 2 minus x and 3 plus square root of 7 minus x left. Now I put minus 2 instead of x. So what will happen? The first expression becomes 4 because 2 minus minus 2 is 4. If I put 2 here, minus 2 here, it becomes 7 plus 2 which is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6. So 4 times 6 is 24. So the question mark that we are supposed to answer here, this problem is 24. Uh, okay, now next problem, problem 7. Consider the following quadratic equation, x squared plus 3x plus 4m plus 1 equals 0. If this equation has a double root, then 16m plus 5 is equal to what? Okay, so you know that a quadratic equation has a double root if and only if its discriminant is equal to zero. And of course it depends which formula you prefer. Uh, the discriminant in ABC formula is B squared minus 4AC. But the discriminant for a PQ formula is P over 2 totally squared minus Q. In this problem, because I see that this coefficient is already 1, so it might be better that if I use uh, the PQ formula. So what I will do, I will write it as x squared and then plus 3x and 4m plus 1, which does not contain any x in it, can be considered here, should be considered here as my Q. So this is the P. And this expression will be the Q. And the discriminant is P over 2 squared minus Q. So to have the double root, D should be equal to 0. So P is 3 over 2 totally to power 2 minus Q. 4M plus 1 should be equal to 0. 
but I am looking for M because in order to answer this question mark I need to find M. So 3 over 2 to, uh, to the power of 2 is 9 over 4 and I move everything else to the right hand side so it becomes positive 4m plus 1. I multiply both sides by 4 so it becomes 9 the right hand side becomes 16m plus 4. I'm very lucky so I really don't need to find m because what I need is this combination. This is not exactly that combination but it is very simple if I just add 1 to both sides the left hand side becomes 10, the right hand side becomes 16m plus 4 plus 1 which is plus 5. So even without answering, even, even, even without knowing what m is, I can immediately answer what is the answer to 16m plus 5 which is a 10. Okay, the next question Question number 8. Consider the following expression a cubed plus 2a squared b plus ab squared all over a squared b minus b cubed minus a squared plus ab all over a squared minus ab. If you simplify this expression as much as possible, then this expression becomes an asterisk over a box then what is the asterisk minus the box? So in principle you have to simplify this expression as much as possible and then read this expression and that expression and just simply subtract them. Of course here I want to subtract two fractions. You know that in principle I have to factorize the denominators and find the LCD. But because this is an A level question it is always important to be able to uh, think outside the box. Okay, because in normal problems we just factorize the denominators, we don't factorize the numerators. But if you are observant and smart enough, you can immediately realize that this time, even though it is not the regular way of doing things, it is also good to factorize the numerators because it will cancel things a lot. Many things will be canceled. Okay, so let us see. If I ask you to factorize the numerator, you see that A is in common in all of them so I can pull it out and here in the denominator I can pull a b out so let us do this step by step now so the question mark is equal to a, I factor an a out then it will be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and in the denominator I will have b a squared minus b squared okay so far it seems that we have wasted the time to factorize the numerator but if you are observant enough you see no it is not the case in this one, in the numerator I can pull an A out, in the denominator I can also pull an A out. So the numerator becomes A times A plus B, the denominator becomes A times A minus B. Okay, but at least here you see that this A and that A now can be simplified. And that is a good progress because instead of working with this fraction, I will only work with fraction A plus B over A minus B, which is simpler in form. But now what happens for the first one? Is there something similar that can happen for the first fraction as well? Yes, because if you recognize this pattern, you can continue and write A. So I wrote, uh, wrote this A there, but instead of this one, I hope that you can see the pattern immediately. It is A plus B squared. And now in the denominator, you can also recognize the conjugate rule. So it becomes A minus B, A plus B, minus the second fraction now is very simpler so it is a plus b over a minus b but now you see what happens this a plus b that you see here will cancel one of these a plus b's because when I say a plus b squared it means that I have a plus b times a plus b one of them will cancel this one one of them will survive so in the denominator one is left so let me write everything in order again so it becomes a a plus B in the denominator I have only B and A minus B and then I have minus A plus B A minus B okay so the reason I consider this a level question because this part is outside box thinking in usual problems we just factorize the denominators and then find LCD and immediately do the subtraction 
But here, if you understand this is possible, it is much easier to find, to, to manipulate this uh, algebraic expression. And now even finding LCD is extremely simple. Hopefully you see that this expression itself is the LCD. So what I will do, I will write that as my LCD, least common denominator I mean, and then I compare this one with the denominator of the first one, nothing has changed, so I copy and paste the numerator without any change. And then I have minus, I compare LCD again with this one, what extra factor I see, I see extra factor B. So the numerator should be multiplied by this extra factor B. So it becomes B times A plus B. As usual, I do not touch the denominator. I keep it in factorized form, but I expand the numerator. To expand the numerator, I multiply A here and there. I multiply minus B here and there. So the first one becomes A squared plus AB. The second one becomes minus BA minus B squared. And now this one and that one are cancelled, so let me write it once more. So this becomes a squared minus b squared over, uh, sorry, over, uh, I don't know why this is doing this. Uh, anyway, so b times a minus b. But now in the numerator, you can see I can factorize more. It is already simplified, but we can simplify because it is mentioned as much as possible. So I would factorize it again. Uh, B A minus B. And now this A minus B also cancel that A minus B. And what is left for me is just A plus B over b and this cannot be simplified more. Now if I compare the last one with this I can immediately see that the star is a plus b and box is b. So this means that star minus box is a plus b minus b which is just simply a. So the answer to this problem is simply a. Okay, the last question now. The following question number nine. The following figure is part of the graph of a quintic means fifth degree polynomial P of X. If P of two is minus 44, then 16 times P of 0 0.5 is what? Okay, so this is the type of problems we had during the home assignments and also during the lecture. Okay, so you see that I told you that you need to look for a horizontal line that passes through the grid points and the curve exactly. It is not hard to see that this is your horizontal line because these intersection points are the exact grid points. And then if I ask you what this number is, because this scale is 1, so this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. So let me write it there. Uh, this is just simply 4. And then let me also uh, write these scales. So here this is minus 0 comma 5. The next one is minus 1. This point is minus 3 halves. And this point is minus 2. Okay, now look. If I uh, bring, if I shift this graph 4 units downward, what will happen? Yes, if you want to see what happens, it seems like that I am shifting the x-axis four units upward, then it will be like this. Okay, and then you see that these points are intersection points of the shifted curve uh, with the x-axis. Okay, but of course in reality I told you that this point will come here, this point will come here, and this point will come here, and finally this point will come here. Okay, so this motivates me to define a new polynomial, q of x, which is my polynomial that I have in the picture, four units, uh, shifted four units downward. And then if I ask you, do you know the roots of q of x? The answer is fairly simple. Because this point is there, when I shift the graph four units downward, it comes here. So one root of this is minus two. Okay, 
and now the next point is this point I shifted four units down so it becomes minus one so the next zero of this uh, polynomial is minus one then four will be moved here so it becomes zero so the next zero is zero and finally this will also come here which will be like this it becomes like a tangent so it is not only a zero but if you remember from the lesson if the curve is tangent to the x-axis it becomes a double root so the the root is one yes because if I bring this down so this point is actually one yes so this is one but I would write this is a double root okay so in, uh, if I ask you what is Q of X you will say Q of X is a constant which we still don't know X minus the first root times X minus the second root times X minus the third root times x minus the fourth root but that fourth root is a double root so I put a power of 2 let me simplify it a bit I have a this one is just simply x so if you don't mind let me put it here and then I have x minus minus 2 it becomes x plus 2 x minus minus 1 becomes x plus 1 and finally x minus 1 to the power of 2 so this is my q of x but I am looking for p of x so it motivates me to move 4 to the other side so p of x is q of x plus 4 and q of x is this expression so this means finally p of x is equal to ax x plus 2 x plus 1 and x minus 1 squared plus 4 but of course I cannot still claim that I know P of X because still A is missing and that is the reason why they have provided you another piece of information before asking something about the polynomial P. You will use this to fine tune this A. What is the meaning of this? It means that if you go to the polynomial P and replace every appearance X with 2, the output is supposed to be minus 44. So let us do that. I go to my polynomial I take all these x's off and replace them with 2 the output is supposed to be minus 44 so let us do that so p of 2 equals to minus 44 implies that a times 2 times 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 1 times 2 minus 1 squared plus 4 is minus 44 and then this is a very simple equation to solve, yes? Because this is just 4, this is just 3, this is 1 to power 2 is just 1, and there is a 2 here, so 2 times 4, 8 times 3, 24, 24 times 1 is just 24 times A. So it is 24 times A, and then I have an extra 4 here, on the right hand side I will have minus 44 I move 4 to the other side so 24 24 a becomes minus 48 and if I divide everything by 24 a becomes minus 2 so now I really know everything about my polynomial so P of X instead of a I put minus 2 and then I copy and paste the rest Yes, this is my p of x. But now what I want to do, I want to calculate 16p of 0 0.5. 0 0.5 means 1 half, so it means that I replace every appearance of x with uh, 1 half and calculate the number and this is p of 0 0.5. Whatever I get, I multiply by 16. So let us do it in one go. So it's 16p of 1 half, instead of 0 0.5 I wrote 1 half, so this becomes 16 times minus 2 times I put 1 half instead of x times if I put 1 half instead of x here 1 half plus 2 is 5 over 2 multiplied by if I put 1 half instead of x 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves and then I put 1 half here so 1 half minus 1 becomes minus a half but I raise it to power 2 it becomes 1 over 4 
and then finally plus 4. I have to multiply everything, of course, be careful. I have to multiply everything by 60. This is just P of 0 0.5. Whatever it is, I have to multiply it by 16. Okay, so what is the answer? Uh, so the first thing that comes to mind is to simplify this 2 with that 2. And then I have here 2 times 2 times 4 is 16. And 5 times 3 times 1 and times minus 1 is minus 15. So this becomes equal to 16 times minus 15 over 16 and then plus uh, 16 times 4. Yes, because I have to multiply 16 here and I have to multiply 16 there. This 16 and 16 are gone. So what is becomes minus 15 and 16 times 4 is 64. So the answer becomes 49. So this is the answer that we have to provide there, yes? So this is the answer to the problem. Okay, I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.